and Dre and Yella, they became so popular, as you know, that they decided that they want to focus focus more on their music. And yeah. uh, so I think we were together only, what, a year or two? Maybe two, maybe two, because um, we started taking off, uh, surgery and Juice started taking off while we were at Dudo's. We started getting more gigs out of town and it became more profitable for me to hop mm -hmm. on a plane and go do three or four shows in Texas, Louisiana, than to sit here and promote a show, promote a party. So, uh, and then we'd still be back home on the week, so doing, uh, by Monday, we'd go out on Friday, Thursday or Friday, mm -hmm. do, uh, go to Texas, Louisiana, wherever, wherever they booked us at, do three or four shows, come back home with a pocket full of money on Monday morning, <laughs> and do it again the following weekend. So it was an interesting time for us, man. But, you know, I... I, um, I got to ask you something. I got to ask you something because yeah. one of the first things, one of the first people, I was talking about this on my syndicated show, the Greg Mack show. You know, we heard in about 20-something cities. But we, I was talking on there because I said one of the first friends I made when I came to L.A. was Barry White. Okay. I went to a party, Ray Parker Jr., uh, uh, was opening up a Mayor Ray Khan Studios. And uh, when I got there, I was talking to Ray Parker Jr. and Barry White. I'm already sitting here like, oh my God, oh my God. And so I started talking to him and Barry White just started laughing at me because I, uh, and maybe and this is the question where I'm going to it with you is because I still kind of had a Texas accent a little bit. <laughs> and, uh, and, you know, I was very kind of naive to the ways of, Los Angeles, and he just, he said, man, you're like a breath of fresh air. So I wanted to ask you, when you first met me, I know your homegirl said, you know, you got this guy coming from Texas. So what did you think, man, when you first met me? I, I, I'm going to tell you, the truth, be man. honest. You and them cowboy boots, man. You had that, he had that little El Dorado, okay? You had that big yellow, he had, he had the, the, the old school El Dorado, not, not the, uh, he had that, uh, the 76, was 76, 77? Yellow on, is it yellow on yellow or yellow on white? Man, I don't know what you're talking about with that. I remember the El Dorado, man, and the cowboy boots, dude. That's what I remember. Okay, the El Dorado and the cowboy boots. Uh, and um, and uh, I didn't think nothing about it. Did you, I think you had a cowboy hat, if I ain't mistaken, Greg. Uh, <laughs> there might have been one in the room. People don't know that I'm really a country boy. I'm a country boy at heart. I love my country. Well, but, I never knew that. I thought you just passed through the country because there was something to do. No, nah, man. How long have you been on the radio? 43 years. Wow. Wow. I ain't mad, Doc. People say, I guess at this time, whatever we've done, we've done it 35, 40 years, man. I've been in the club business 40 years. So I retired last year from the club business. I started doing this YouTube stuff. So, you know, I still in, in entertainment. They say entertainment, uh, probably about, yeah, damn near 45 years, but uh, club 40. Um, when um, the Mixed Masters took off, and you started having success, and K-Day became the number one radio station for hip hop, man. How did that make you feel? I'm, I remember one, I, I, stop, stop, I'm sorry. I remember one time we had a, a situation at, uh, at Skate Man, and I think Roger, I was doing doodles, Roger snuck into Skate Man, mm -hmm. and uh, they had brought in, I think it was Midnight Star, Mm -hmm. And I never forget, you got on the phone. I told you what happened. You got on the phone to Gerald Busby, or whoever, whoever was in charge, and you said something to him. And when, it was funny because people don't realize Skate Man and Dudos are basically in the same lot. If yeah. you jump off a of Dudo's roof, you're going to land in Skate Land's parking lot. Okay? Right. Right. And the limo went to Skate Land first. Came out of Dudo's. I'm watching it happen. Came out of Skate Land's parking lot. Man, the U-turn in Central came right back into Dudo's, okay? And I'm like, dude, this dude got power. <laughs> I remember you making that phone call. And you said some things to that person, whoever it was. He wants the records played, whatever the case may be. And it changed the whole direction. Like, damn, look at Greg. I ain't mad at you. Well, you know, here's the thing. You are the first DJ to play such and such artist or song or whatever, and then they go and do something for somebody else. Right. Right next door to you. Oh hell no. Right. And uh, and I was known to you know uh, um, you know pull people's records uh, if they disrespected is the way I looked at it. Um, it wasn't like just being mean hearted, but it's like come on now, you know, because if I pull your record off. You know, 
And, you know, I, you say, how did I feel about it? We were just having fun, Lonzo. Yeah. I, wasn't even, I wasn't even thinking that we were making history. I wasn't thinking like that. You know, I think if we were thinking like that, we probably wouldn't have made history. Right. Um, I, I was just having fun. It was, you know, I was working from, you know, nine in the morning till two in the morning uh, every day. Uh, you know, just just having a ball. It was my life. You know, I lived it. I, I breathed it, you know, and and it was fun meeting all the New York cats that were coming out. I'm glad uh, you said that. I'm glad you said that because mm -hmm. it used to be a, a issue because K-Day was always open to everybody and New York wasn't as open to us as K-Day was to everybody else. How did mm -hmm. you feel about that? Well, about what? Being well, open to... The, I was one of the first guys that ever got played on WBLS in, uh, in New York because turn off lights could not be denied, okay? Mm -hmm. But everybody mm -hmm. else caught hell. Nobody else could get any kind of love out of, out of, out of, out of, the, um, out of the East Coast stations. Oh, I just looked at it like, okay, you guys need to work harder. That's the way I looked at it. I mean, the East Coast has a different vibe. You know that. It's, even today has a different vibe. There's a lot of West Coast artists that'll never get airplay out there. Probably more now than ever, but back then, you know, we welcomed East, West, South, you know, we had Miami, you know, guys, Chicago, we didn't care. I mean, if it was a hit, it was a hit, it was a hit. But okay. in uh, uh, LA is more receptive. New York is more sophisticated. And, and I don't mean that in a bad way, but their, their type of music is a little more sophisticated than uh, Los Angeles. I remember being in the car I think I told you this story before. Uh, I had Run DMC. We were we were going somewhere to do something, and uh, we were listening. And surgery came on, okay. and and Run said, "You know, man, that that West Coast music makes me nervous. <laughs> it just makes me nervous." <laughs> I said, "What do you mean?" He said, "I can't explain it. It's just I'm not. I just can't feel it, you know." And so. What that told me was that's what New York feels. They they really weren't feeling you know, uh, the, the type of stuff that we were putting out on the uh, West Coast.